Hey you guys, this is Raphael from ShilohRelics.com. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're having a good day. Things are going well here. I'm just thankful to get to be with you guys again today. Today we're going to talk about a big gun from a very important time in American firearms history where uh, things kind of get lost sometimes and they're underappreciated for how cool they are. And they were important for many, many decades after they were produced. This gun is one of the many arms that was made uh, right after the War of 1812. They realized the War of 1812 was like, we need to get our butt in gear and get things standardized and more uh, prepared just in case England comes back for that third time or another country comes back. So what did they do? They made muskets, they made swords, they made pistols. One of the pistols that they made was the U.S. Model 1816 Flintlock Pistol. There was only one maker for these guns. They were made in Middletown, Connecticut by a famous gun maker of the time named Simeon North. And North made these guns from 1817 to 1820. Only made <clears throat> 19,373 of them during that time span. And it was an important time span, and they made a very cool pistol. It's big. Check that out. Big old gun. Nine and one sixteenth inches on the barrel. The barrel is smooth bore, uh, meaning it fired just a regular round ball bullet. It's 54 caliber. And 54 caliber, in case this is the first one you've watched, 54 caliber means that it's 0.54 uh, of an inch. So a little over half an inch in size. They were made originally as flint locks, and meaning that you had a piece of flint in the hammer that hit a pan and caused a spark. That's what fired the bullet. Later on, they, most all of these were switched over to percussion, meaning they got rid of the flint, they got rid of the pan, they added a piece to hold a percussion cap, caused a spark, and that would be what fired the bullet rather than the uh, flint. When you see them converted, it diminishes the value because people like them most of the time uh, as the way they were issued originally in flint. They still sell when they're converted, and a lot of the ones that were converted were done right before the Civil War when they were trying to get their hands on everything they could. Both sides were converting these old, out-of-date pistols. They were modernizing them by switching them to percussion so they could still use them. A lot of them got used in the war. Uh, this one, original flint, and that makes a lot of difference to a collector. You want to see it that way, and it brings more money. A lot of times it'll bring double, maybe even triple, what one of the conversions will bring, just because very few of them still are in that original configuration. This one is pretty from tip to tip. It's got that ancient dark color, like it. the soldier came home, set it up on the mantle or over the fireplace, and it sat there for 150 years. It's got just a dark, thick color all over the barrel. At the base of the barrel, see this? It's got a U.S., and it's got a P for proofed meaning that it passed muster and could be used as a military weapon. <clears throat> we'll get more to that in, in just a minute. On the lock plate, the lock plate will have the Union Eagle, and it will also have uh, Simeon North and Middleton, Middletown. Middleton. I always try to call it Middleton. It's Middletown, Connecticut, the production location. This one, the action still works well. All the parts are there. Makes a big difference. The wood is a really pretty, really pretty, it's a really pretty piece of walnut. One solid piece of walnut carved, and it's got a dark look just like the rest of the gun. It has an iron back strap, iron grip cap. Uh, on, they used a hickory uh, ramrod, and I think that's kind of cool that of all the woods that are out there, you choose hickory. But they had hickory ramrods, most of the time they're missing. A lot of them are replaced. So if that, that don't let that bother you. That just happened. Because you remember one of the later models, not too long after this, we switched to a swivel to hold that ramrod in place. This one still had just the loose. So if you pulled it out, loaded it, and laid it down, you're liable to lose it. So that just happened. Uh, on the back of the stock, opposite of the lock plate, you've got this. It's on the flat. It's got a cartouche that says LS. 
What does LS stand for? It's for Luther Sage, S-A-G-E. And he was an important man in the early uh, first half of the 1800s. And he earned his way up, up the ladder. He started in 1809 working uh, for uh, as an armorer in the Springfield Armory. He was making, and I learned things when I do these videos. It's fun because I learned things. I, I had seen his name forever and I never really knew about him because he shows up on swords. He shows up on long guns. He shows up on pistols and important guy. Never knew much about him. He started 1809 making 18 bucks a month. That's what he made. And it's a pretty good job at the time. He rose his way up uh, in until 1823, where he's listed as uh, the assistant armor and inspector of contract arms. So he was approving these at the time, made 40 bucks a month. That's a lot, double his money from when he started. Uh, he, in 1823, went on to Frankfurt Arsenal and worked there and then went back to the Springfield Arsenal and he shows up. Uh, he last inspected an arm in 1840. So he was there o over all those years making me do math today can't believe i do that to me over 20 something years he was inspecting guns for the government uh he died october 1861 what happened in 1861 the civil war started and a lot of the pieces that he had influenced and approved were used during that war so somebody way back then that inspected this gun was still influencing things during the civil war but it's Luther Sage, S-A-G-E. So thank you, Mr. Sage, for your contribution to our country. Uh, and I'm glad I now know the story of Luther Sage. Uh, but it's really pretty. It's untouched. It looks good from all angles. You can see this on shallowrelics.com. You can sign up on shallowrelics.com to get uh, emails from us. You can place your order online. And once you place that order, the second order, you get a return customer discount because I appreciate you. There are a lot of places they don't give a damn about you, but I do. I'm thankful for you because you let me do things. You let me call this a job. And I am very, very thankful for that. Uh, I hope you guys are doing well. I talked to a friend tonight that, uh, and, it's, and it's just sticking on my mind. And he... Uh, was out in the world and did uh, a show trying to make things better. And he caught a lot of crap for it. it the show wasn't, uh, well, I just won't go into all that. But the reason I mentioned that is because he had a lot of people that turned on him and didn't do it in a nice way. If you've got constructive criticism, be careful of how you say it. I watched a friend of mine that is one of the nicest, best people I have ever known uh, that spoke to somebody this weekend, and I thought, that's not the person I know. I think the internet has turned a lot of people bitter, and I think the world has turned a lot of people bitter. Please don't let that happen. We can trans uh, translate the message that we want to get across to people in a nice way, even if it's not something nice that we're saying. And they're a lot more likely to understand it and take it in and soak it up if they don't write you off as being a butthead when you say it. So take time and study before those words fly out of your mouth. And if you're online, don't say something in a text message or a uh, post that you wouldn't say to that person if they were standing in front of you and especially, you wouldn't say to them if you thought they would stomp you. That is not a good thing to do. It does not do anybody any good, especially you. Think positive. Be that positive force because I, we need it. And I've got faith in you guys because you're smarter people than most folks because you're watching these videos. We're all going to get smarter. I learned about Luther Sage today. I'm going to learn something else tomorrow. And I hope to get to share it with you. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you remember you're cared about. Tell those that you love that you love them because you might not ever see them again. And be that positive light. Catch you guys next time.